If there's one thing polymer clayers love, it's texture. And if there's another thing we love, it's making our own unique textures. Today I have for you a really fun way to spice up your texture making. Hi there creative people, Sandy here. Welcome to another Friday Findings video at KeepsakeCrafts.net. So can you tell me what all of these texture sheets have in common? They were all made with spices from my kitchen cabinets and I'm going to show you how you can make all of these yourself really easily. Now that you know there's spices, you may have a guess as to what this top row is. And each of these three colors, each one is its own spice. So all the, all the pink ones you probably have guessed were made with star anise. Star anise is maybe one of the more obvious spices for making textures because of its beautiful shape. There are a couple of things to pay attention to when you're using star anise. I like to use this side that has the openings because I think it gives a more interesting shape. You could certainly use the other side but you get kind of a more craggy look. But try them both and see which you like. Yeah, see that one's okay. Now if you look at the star anise from the side, you can see these kind of curve up. It's not perfectly flat. So you kind of have to rock it on your sheet of clay. And to press in firmly enough to get a good impression, you may end up cracking it. That just happens. Most of mine eventually cracked after a few presses into clay. But that's okay. And there you go, really wonderful star shape. One thing I noticed was that some of these have seeds in there in each of those long points, and they actually make a pretty cool impression. Oh, yeah, there it goes. It's cracking. Yep. So you can see, well, let's use this. There, you see you get that seed in there. And some of them I like the impressions better than others. These are some I set aside because I just liked the shape I got with them. So that is how these two pink samples were made. I dusted these two with a little bit of mica powder to bring out the texture. This one was just the star shapes. And by the way, if your stars break as you're pressing them in, don't be afraid to just take your little pieces and you can go ahead and fill in. You can go back and fill in more. This one, I just took the piece, one of those ones that I told you I like that has the little seed, and I just pressed a pattern, a crosshatch pattern, which I think is really cool. To make these two, these actually have a raised texture. I don't know if you can tell. This one, I put a little mica powder over it, and this one too. These textures are raised. And I did that by mixing up some Easy Mold. It's a two-part molding putty. I've done a video on that and I will link to that. I rolled it through my pasta machine on the thickest setting and then did the exact same thing I did here. And once it cured, now I have a texture sheet. The best way to do it is to put it over your clay and then stand up and roll very firmly with an acrylic roller and you get this kind of a texture. Or Roll a sheet of clay out on a setting of your pasta machine that isn't the thickest setting. Place your clay on your sheet and then roll it through the pasta machine on a setting thicker than that. So like I have a zero is the thickest on my pasta machine and one is the second thickest. So this was rolled through on a one and then I, and this was also rolled through on a one, and then I put them both through on a zero. The thing that you might notice that's a little different when you roll it through the pasta machine is that your design gets elongated. You can see that these are a little stretched. So if you don't want that, what you'll want to do is just place your clay down, place your texture sheet over it. Like I said, I find it best to stand up so I can put firm, even pressure with my acrylic roller and then get a texture. So that's spice number one, star anise. Any guesses as to what this one is? Cinnamon sticks. The ends of the cinnamon sticks 
have some pretty cool designs. Now I actually went through my container. I think these were left over from Christmas. Some of them have better designs than others. I mean, some of these were kind of broken. Some are thinner, some are thicker. Like that one's kind of a mess. But I pulled out the ones that I liked best and use those in the exact same way. So I really like this smallish one. I just liked that shape, those curly cues. And all I did here was I pressed rows of the design and then I flipped it another way and pressed rows and flipped it back and forth. So these two rows, they're both going the same way. And then in these rows, they're alternating. And then in these rows, I kind of did, on this very end, I kind of did angles. You could take advantage of the fact that if you have a piece that's pretty consistent from end to end, one end is the reverse of the other. So for this, I did it one way, and then I flipped it. So we're alternating mirror images. Once you start playing with these, you'll think of all sorts of variations of patterns that you can create. Don't expect perfection though, because as you're pressing, you're moving material, which can distort things just a little bit. And if you don't get a full impression with these shapes, it's pretty easy to put it back in and get it deep enough. You'll also find that when you're pressing into the molding putty, it's actually a lot easier than pressing into polymer clay. So be careful because it's easy to press almost too deep. If you love my videos, I hope that maybe you'll consider supporting me on Patreon. It really makes a difference. If I didn't have patrons, I don't know that I would continue making YouTube videos. I don't know that it would be worth it to me. I love interacting with my patrons. They get lots of extras over on the Patreon feed. We have a good time over there. And I make bonus tutorials for my patrons. Every month the patrons have an opportunity of getting up to two bonus tutorials. So if that interests you, feel free to check it out at patreon.com slash sandysewin and many many thanks to those of you who are already supporting me. Love you all. Again I used the molding putty rolled out on my pasta machine and I did the exact same thing. This is an entire sheet of the smaller one and I just did diagonal rows. I, I kind of like this pattern. I mean, who would guess that was a cinnamon stick? I just went one way. Let's see, I went like this. Rows, and then I alternated and put them in between. And then when I went back the other way, I just tried to make these across from these. I didn't make it perfect, but it's a handmade texture. And this is, I think, the medium size one that I liked. And I just did, well, I did kind of alternating. You did one one way, one the other. Again, once you start playing with this, you'll think of all different ways and patterns to make. Practice on your polymer clay until you get a pattern you like. Then you can make it in your texture sheet. Personally, I prefer having the patterns in the mold, impressed into the molding putty and then I get a raised pattern in my clay. So this one was done with the bigger one and these were both done on the pasta machine so that they're a little bit stretched. And yeah, these are not going back in my kitchen, obviously, <laughs> to be cooked with. I don't really even like anise licorice, so. Now finally, these orange ones, you get a really fine, regular texture from cloves. I don't know why what on earth possessed me to buy this container of cloves at Costco? I think I bought this like the first year we bought our house 20 years ago. You can, you can see how many I've used. <laughs> but I came up with a great use for them. One thing you'll want to do is you open your cloves. If you can smell, unlike me, I'm sure your work area will smell wonderful. I can't smell. You see that a lot of these have these little buds on them. But if you try pressing that into your clay, you yeah, you may find it just crumbles and makes a mess of your clay. So what I suggest doing is don't even try to emboss that part. Just look through the cloves and find ones where those four little points are still intact. Here's one. And the bud has come off. And pull out maybe three or four of those to use for making your designs. 
And then you can use the rest <laughs> or not. <laughs> I think I was thinking of studying oranges maybe at Christmas time. I don't know. And with the cloves, make any pattern you want once again. My favorite of all of them was just to hold one and hey, it's got a built in little handle. Oh, again, if you don't line it, get it all the way, just put it back in and then you can get your whole impression. And these have perfect spots to line up. And you want to pull yourself out a few because sometimes these little arms, I don't know what else to call them, the arm of the little cross does break off. So you can just line them up. I keep missing that upper right one. I remember to rock that way. Line them up and make patterns. And here's one where I've done all of that. I just think it, it looks like a textile or a fabric. Just really cool. For this one, I alternated. So I did one as an X and then the one next to it as a plus and just kept turning it. X plus. And then of course the next row I alternated. And they, they actually nest together really nicely and give you this design. And again here's these two. This one was done on the pasta machine so you can see the X's are stretched and this one was done with just rolling with an acrylic roller. Now that you have these ideas, I hope you'll take this idea and run with it. And please share with me your ideas for kitchen spices or similar kinds of things that we can use to create great textures in our polymer clay.